Welcome back, Mox fans, to another episode of the Southern Sports Network. I'm Jeff Jensen. The Mox played the role of Lion Tamers all week against St. Leo. Let's take a look at the highlights. Wednesday night, the men's basketball team would play St. Leo while trying to hang on to sole possession of first place in the Sunshine State Conference. John Thompson led the way, recording his eighth double-double of the season with 16 points and 13 rebounds. A controversial play happened in the first half. Watch St. Leo's number 20, Jordan Price. When trying to get possession of the ball, he throws an elbow and connects with Braxton Williams' head. Was it intentional? The refs discussed it and decided to throw the Lakeland native and St. Leo's leading scorer out of the game. Near the end of the game, despite the Mocs having led by as many as 16 points, the Lions found themselves down by three on the last possession. St. Leo managed to get a three-point shot off, but Thompson got his most important rebound of the night. Mocs win 87-82. For the Lady Mox, Megan Zekas led the scoring again while recording 19 of her 22 points in the second half, including this play where she took St. Leo's Kiara Bradley coast to coast for a lay-in. Chelsea Johnson wasn't far behind scoring 20 points. She was also perfect from the charity stripe going 11 for 11. The 73-62 win improves the Lady Mox home record to 11-1. Fans that left Henley Field early Tuesday night missed a heck of a game. We fast forward to the eighth inning with the Mox down 5-2 with two on and two outs. Zach Maggard hit a two RBI single to make it a one run game. He would be lifted for pinch runner Joel Frazier who stole two bases from two throwing errors by the Lions. From third he would score easily off Andrew Grutka's single to tie the game. Adam Miller came in to pinch run and he also got a steal and a base on a pass ball, putting the go ahead run in scoring position. Braxton Chisholm hit a single to left that scored Miller and gave the Mox their first lead of the game 6-5. They would add two more runs before Daniel Tillman got the save to beat the Lions. The Lions didn't just sleep tonight, they slept all week as they went 0-3 against the Mox in three different sports. Ever wonder what goes on inside the training room on game day? Southern Sports Network sent a camera to get an exclusive look behind closed doors. Brandon Jenkins, I'm a sophomore, uh, played a point guard, get here around 5.45 to about, uh, about 6, 6.40. Do a lot of stretching, get tape, do stretching, and uh, listen to some music. I listen to a little bit of gospel music. Something really relaxing me, you know. Just like relaxing myself and have Sam tape me up, make sure I'm okay, good to go. Tell me if I do anything that causes pain. That hurt you. Obviously, that's something. I'm Carlton Mark. Uh, I'm a forward on Florida Southern's basketball team. <laughs> we will have one of our illustrious docs check us out. Right now, your pain is on the joint line. Which are right there, so you worry about whether or not you've tweaked a meniscus. And I'll talk with him tomorrow and see about getting you scheduled for an MRI. However long the injury lasts, say if we, we're in here. <laughs> we're in here uh, doing everything to work it out and stuff like that. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully I'll be all right. Any students who are interested in majoring in athletic training should contact Al Green in the athletic office. The Florida Southern College tennis season is well underway. Joining me in studio today from the men's tennis team is junior Ben Taylor. Ben, thanks for joining me today. No problem. All right, first off, let's talk about yesterday's match against Weber International. What, what was it like to get back into the full season of tennis? Uh, it was good. It was a lot of fun. Um, we, uh, in the fall, there was a lot of individual tournaments, and uh, it was nice to bring it together as a, as a team effort again. All right, now, Coach Trey Heath was coaching against his father, Bill. What, what do you think that must have been like for him? Yeah, it would have been, I mean, it was the first time he's done that. They've both been coaching for a long time, uh, but before they were both based at Weber. Um, but yeah, it, it must have been pretty, pretty difficult, but also it's one that he definitely wanted to win. Okay, now I heard uh, through the athletic department in the fall that you guys did a lot of conditioning. Has that been showing at all on the courts this spring? Yeah, I think so. Well, we've only had two matches so far. And uh, actually yesterday we had, uh, we had some tight matches that, that came down to a, a big effort at the end there. And... Uh, actually, two of the opponents started cramping, and and uh, the Florida Southern players pulled through. So I, I think the the conditioning was was pretty obvious in the end. Brings back the old saying, "The legs feed the wolf," huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, talk to me about your competition in the Sunshine State Conference. This being Florida, there is a lot of high quality tennis players. What's it like competing out there? Yeah, it's tough. Uh, Florida is definitely is definitely the strongest state for tennis for us. Um, we have, I think, in our in our region, actually, we have the majority of the top, the top 10 teams in the, in the nation. So uh, th that makes our schedule, uh, schedule really tough. Uh, most of the teams we play are, uh, are ranked top 10 or top so you, 20. So you would say in Division Two, you probably have one of the most competitive schedules conference-wise? Yeah, I would say so, yep. All right. Now, who are some of the players that Mox fans should try to keep their eye out on this season? Definitely the new guys, uh, Javier Castro and Nicholas Bigler. They're, they're playing five and six for us, but they were number ones for their, their previous schools. So they're, um, 
yeah, they're, they're going to be very interesting to see how they, how they play out and, and how they uh, improve during the season. Also, we have uh, some guys stepping up from last year. For example, Brian de Montfort. He, he wasn't playing in the team, the top six last year, and, uh, and now he's playing number two for us. So that's good too. But, but everyone is, everyone is going to be interesting this year because everyone's finding their, their, their role in the team kind of and, and what number they're going to play. So everyone's game's developing, developing pretty well. Now you played doubles, right? Yeah. What, what, can you tell us about the chemistry that you and your doubles partner have together? I play doubles with Javier. He's from, he's from Ecuador and we, uh, I mean, I've only met him. He, he came this semester, so I've only known him for, for four weeks, but, but our games kind of, our games kind of suited well for, for a doubles pairing. And, and from that, coach put us together. And since then we've, uh, we've practiced a lot, a, a lot of doubles together. So, uh, I mean, yeah, it, it works, it works. Now. Here, here's the big question. With you guys being so condi well conditioned from fall and having such a competitive schedule and already you guys are at a 2-0 mark showing perfect results so far, what are, you guys, what are you guys expecting out of this year? Obviously we take, we take one match at a time. Um, we, we build up to each match individually. We never, we never look at the, at the whole season, but, but we have a, before the season started we had a season goal of, of first of all making the, the, the regional tournament, qualifying for that. Uh, that's with a, a 500 record, uh, so that was our first goal. And then from there, we're gonna we're gonna take it uh, take it from there and try qualify for nationals. And then each round of nationals is a is a new experience, a new competition. Definitely some lofty goals, Ben. And we all <laughs> hope you that achieve them. I want to thank, thank you, you for joining me in studio today. No I want to remind you, Mox fans, that you need to go out and support both the men's and women's tennis team as they're playing just out the door here at Florida Southern College. I want to remind you that the baseball team is at Henley Field this weekend for a Friday game and a Saturday doubleheader. Also, the men's basketball team is back in sole possession of first place after Rollins stumbled with a Sunshine State Conference opponent. So make sure you go out and support both your men's and women's basketball team. For the Southern Sports Network, I'm Jeff Jensen. See you next week. Go Mox.